It is middle of April here in Anchorage, Alaska, and today I'm gonna to be planting up my Lysianthus seedlings. Yesterday, I noticed some rosetting on my Lysianthus seedlings. So if you can take a look, here are two examples. This one right here and this one are rosetting, and the way you can tell, our pairs of leaves are coming at just like in a clustered bunch out of the base whereas for you can see in all these other ones you're supposed to have new pairs of leaves coming on top of the old ones um, right in the center and growing out perpendicularly to the last ones with these two you can see they're just growing at any angle straight from the same point not one on top of the other this one is a little bit further along I don't know if you could see see two pairs of bigger leaves coming out straight from the center there so rosetting happens on lysianthus when the seedlings are experiencing either um, like drought or heat stress so if they're too hot or if they haven't been watered enough then they might start to rosette and this is a bad sign if you're trying to grow these for flowers which i assume everyone who does grow them are trying to grow them for flowers it the seedling starts to then focus all of its energy um creating these leaves at its the base in this cluster and instead of sending out flower shoots later on in the season these lysianthus take a long time to grow and pr to produce flowers and when they rosette it's very hard it's very difficult to get flowers that year at all Especially in a climate like mine in Alaska when the growing season isn't very long I should, I just have like this one shot to get them to grow like well enough to produce some flowers by the end of the season these um, Seedlings that have rosetted probably won't so there is a way to combat or sort of reverse a rosetting process and that is if you keep them at cold temperatures for a a few weeks so cold temperatures around 50 degrees for maybe a three or so two or three weeks and then it might start to grow normally after that so I'm gonna get these transplanted out I think if I don't have enough space I just won't put in the um, rosetting ones I will just put in everything else and if I do have space I'll put them in the ground and hope that it will reverse the rosetting stage being out in the ground they're in the hoop house where I'm going to be planting them, it gets pretty warm in the day, especially on sunny days. It'll get to like the high 70s in there, maybe 80s. In the evening, it stays maybe 5 or 10 degrees above what it is outside. So outside, it's getting in the 20s. It doesn't go any lower than that. In the hoop house, it's usually now staying above freezing, above 32, or just around at 32 at night. And that's because I have a lot of things in there now, all the soil that's in there now, all of the containers full of soil. I have a big tote out there full of water. I think that helps to combat any temperature dips. Um, and it only really dips for a few, a couple of hours at most below freezing every night now because the days are getting longer, the nights are getting shorter. It happens in the morning when it gets the coldest. But it's definitely um, a good time to be planting out Lysianthus. They're cold hardy. They can survive if they're in the ground temperatures down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so I don't expect it to ever get that cold in there. Um, it's a good time. And I really just want to give them as much time as possible to be in the ground, to get growing, to hopefully produce those flowers by the end of the season. So I'm going to do that today. It's kind of nerve-wracking because uh, these are just so sensitive these seedlings that I hope and they've taken up so much time to grow that I hope they do well I'll see how many I can fit in I grew a lot and they're all at different points of they're all different sizes right now some of these seedlings are a lot further along than others and that's just been a trial and error for me in what temperature to keep these seedlings growing at whether in my garage or in the office this seems like they grew a lot quicker in the office but also the potting mix that i use to pot these seedlings up initially i wasn't using great quality mix for for planting seedlings so that's kind of a bummer a lot of my seedlings have been a little bit stunted for that but it's a learning experience. I'm glad I know now and I can adjust that in the future. 
And it's been difficult also to tell when these seedlings need water or not, especially with the different potting mixes I use. Some of them dry out on the surface a lot quicker than others, and it looks like, you know, they might be needing water when maybe they don't. So it's just been, like, hard to find the exact groove to grow these seedlings on in. Anyways, I'm going to head out into the hoop house. Start. I started yesterday to prepare the area where I'm going to be planting them up. I'll need Brendan's help to move that trough full of water out of the way and then, you know, get the rest of the bed squared away and get these seedlings planted. So I got that area all planted up, that area that I had allocated to all my lisianthus. I got through a tray and a half and I still have about a tray left and I just have to think now about where I'm going to be planting those out. If I'm going to be planting those out, if I have space, there's still a ton of snow on the ground outside of the hoop house so that's not able to plant in until maybe next month. So I think I'll just wait and see. I still have to clear out a bunch of space in the hoop house as well. I was hoping to do my tomatoes and peppers in there as well. That's the remaining space that I had left. That's what I wanted to do in there, but maybe I'll rethink that. I do have some varieties of tomatoes that I think I can grow outside and peppers I might do in the patio planter. So I came inside. I had to take a break because honestly it got so hot inside the hoop house. I think it got to like the mid 70s and just in like the clothes I'm in, I was getting pretty sweaty just being in there and doing all that planting. But I'm inside now. We took the dog for a walk. We just had a more relaxed Sunday. And I'm here now potting up my Celosia so soil blocks. So this is the flamingo feather or pink flamingo, something like that. Um, and then I have some pompous plume variety. I have them in these soil blocks here. And just now that I have space, now that I'm moving things out into the hoop house, planting up all those lisianthus, and the ones that aren't planted, I'm just gonna keep in there. It's, uh, they're fine at that temperature that it stays in there. So I'm trying to utilize that extra space indoors as much as I can. Brendan is now downstairs, um, taking apart pieces we just we've been buying some furniture for downstairs now it's time to furnish the place and that's a lot of decisions that i have to make that's been taking up you know a lot of my <laughs> mental a lot of my anxiety of thinking what to do now it's all directed down there we bought a few pieces of furniture one of them is a bed a queen size bed frame and so i think he's taking out the pieces and sort of working it out i might go down there in a bit to help him um, and show you some progress on how our whole downstairs remodel is going. We ready to build this bed? Yes. It pretty much looks already built. No. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. guess that headboard came all together. Yeah, can I make a request that we put the bed
right here. Why? This is where my drywall seam is, and we get so much light in here. You, just, you can still kind of see it. You want to cover up your drywall? We all right. So this drywall seam's right here. If we can move the bed anywhere, yeah. covering this, okay, yeah. covering this we'll up. Move it a little more that way. Okay, that's fine. And also, they gave us two rails. I don't know why. I'm pretty sure this goes here. I'm not seeing a slot for the other one, so I think it's extra. <laughs> I don't know. Are there instructions? Not the instructions. All right. When you use a knife like that, it scares me. Okay. Okay. One, two. Well, these are the only ones they come with, so. this um, that we'll all be putting on later we have a mattress protector over it that I think I'm gonna have to wash and then yeah I think I'll just walk around get a feel for it see if that's the right position for it Brendan was suggesting we put the head by the window but I don't know if that's good feng shui <laughs> either way the feet are towards the door so that's good yeah yeah we'll see i'll think about it here's what it is it's not for him yeah yeah you think so when those closet doors are closed it'll feel like more room more space to walk yeah. through honestly you can't go wrong either way yeah it's just personal preference yeah point. yeah and what it looks like with more furniture oh let me show the other piece of furniture that we got looks really nice. It's a little bit darker here. This, oh, we have it's still just junk everywhere. We have a little uh, TV stand, I guess. I don't know what you call it. But I just thought that was really nice under our TV. We bought a new TV that's upstairs with us on like Cyber Monday or Black Friday, sometime this past like holiday season. And the board and that end is looking amazing, all finished. We have a paint board. We did that well in um, paint board chalk or yeah, chalk paint. <laughs> I don't know what you call it. Chalk paper paint. So so we can write with chalk on it. The yeah, through the cabinets. Brennan is doing some work on the ceiling here, just evening it out, and so he was protecting the countertop. We have that faucet in. Once all this mess is gone, it looks really, really nice. And when the cabinets are back in, so 
I'll show you when we get a little bit more things done and finish off in here. We're going to hang the big chandelier here, have hopefully a small dining table, some chairs, a couch, coffee table. We're going to go shopping. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, that's all. Thanks for watching. Bye.